Good evening and thank you for joining us tonight to learn more about the Central Mobility Hub and Connections Multimodal Quarter Plan. I'm Rachel Kennedy, the Quarter Planning Manager for SANDAG and Co-Project Manager for this corridor study. The Comprehensive Multimodal Quarter Plans are a collaborative effort between Caltrans and SANDAG and with me tonight is also Nicola Bernard, the Caltrans Project Manager for this effort. Next slide please. We're offering live interpretation in Spanish this evening, and in a few moments, we'll activate the interpretation feature. Once it is activated, please click on the globe icon at the bottom of your screen to select the language that you would like to hear the presentation in. Attendees may lose audio when the interpretation function is activated. If that's the case, both English and Spanish listeners will need to go to the interpretation button and select their preferred language. And you can see an image of that on the screen here. It's the little globe icon. Uh, with us tonight, we have our interpreter, Carlos Diaz, and I would like to um, allow him to speak for a moment about the translation. Thank you. Gracias. Buenas tardes. Y bienvenidos al la reunión del Plan Integral Multimodal del Corredor. Para este se va a prestar el servicio de interpretación simultánea. Se va a activar justo después de este mensaje. En cuanto quede activo, en la barra inferior, donde aparecen sus controles de Zoom, van a encontrar un icono que parece un globo terráqueo que dice Interpretation. Haga clic en este icono, seleccione Spanish o Español para hacer uso del servicio. Muchas gracias. Thank you and the service will now be started. Thank you, Carlos. Move to the next slide, please. Uh, just to provide a little bit of information about our meeting tonight, um, to let you know this meeting is going to be recorded and we will be making the recording available on the Sandag webpage um, after the meeting. Uh, microphones will be muted during the presentation and you may share comments or questions that you have uh, via the Q&A function. Um, and those comments will also be provided and be part of the record for tonight's meeting. You'll be provided with an opportunity towards the end of the presentation to ask questions. And we'll also be doing a number of um, live polls during the course of the meeting and we encourage you to participate in those. Next slide, please. We're very happy tonight to have Council President uh, Jennifer Campbell with us representing District 2. And I'd like to turn it over uh, to her for some opening remarks. Council President Campbell. Thank you very much. Good evening. It's a pleasure to be with all of you. I'd like to thank Sandeg and Caltrans for hosting this event and for inviting me to speak with all of you. As many of you know, this part of our community is in an exciting period of change. We see on the horizon several new projects that aim to enhance the vibrancy and livability of this part of San Diego City Council District Number Two. Today, we will talk about one such project, the Central Mobility Hub. As Sandag and Caltrans work toward improving transportation throughout the San Diego region, it is only fitting that our community would be pivotal to this conversation. The Midway District in particular will be at the center of this evening's conversation. The Midway District is home to many of San Diego's largest employers. As we all know, the sports arena, but also it includes the Naval Base Point Loma. Additionally, we are proud to be the community that welcomes countless travelers as they fly into San Diego International Airport. But we have much work to do. The Midway area is great and historically rich community. A community of business owners, entrepreneurs, active military, veterans, students, educators. It is my hope that we will transform the Midway district for all of us to enjoy for years to come. My team and I have worked closely with the community which developed the Midway community plan a plan that will make the Midway District a more livable, walkable, and bikeable community. And this evening, I'm hopeful that we can have open and frank conversations with Sandag and Caltrans to discuss how the Central Mobility Hub and supporting transportation solutions can help us in achieving the goals set forth 
in our community plan. I ask you to be mindful of the transportation challenges that impact our community, the traffic congestion, the environmental threats, the pedestrian and bicycle safety. And I ask you to use this meeting as a forum to make sure those challenges are heard so that solutions to them can be found. And let us also discuss what it is we hold most dear, the preservation of our community's character, the safety of our residents, and the maintaining of the unique natural beauty that surrounds us. Let us come together to envision realistic and lasting improvements for the Midway District and surrounding neighborhoods. The input you provide this evening will be critical to the future of our community. And as the community representative for this part of San Diego's District 2, I want to thank you now for your input. And now I'd like to introduce Sandag's Director of Regional Planning, Colleen Clementson. Thank you so much, Council President, and thank you all for joining us here this evening. As Dr. Campbell said, we're here today to discuss a very important project, the Central Mobility Hub and its connections to our region. On behalf of Sandag, I'm coming to you from our vision lab, which is on the 20th floor at 401 B Street, where we're really working to re-envision the transportation future for our region. As we get started, I'd like to take a brief moment to thank our local leaders who are in attendance. We're joined by representatives from the offices of San Diego County Supervisor Nathan Fletcher, Mayor Todd Gloria, and San Diego City Council Member Raul Capillo. Additionally, I see that we have Navy leadership with us. As many of you know, Sandag is working closely with the Navy on their Old Town Campus Revitalization Project, which includes NAVWAR. The Navy is a great partner and I'm happy to see them here with us today. Lastly, I see the names of several leaders representing local organizations and planning groups and thank you all for being with us. This is such an important conversation that we are kicking off and we want to hear your thoughts. We know that what happens here, 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 here a lasting here, 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 impact in the region. Sandeg is currently working on the 2021 plan, which will set forth long-term goals for achieving a modern and robust regional transportation system. I'll tell you more about that plan during this evening's presentation, but for now, I'll simply say this. The Central Mobility Hub is a critical element of our regional plan. So tonight, we'll also discuss key transportation solutions that can improve our communities and your community in particular. It's my hope that you will leave today's meeting excited about this project and its endless possibilities in the region. We must envision the San Diego region of tomorrow, a region that is sustainable and livable and equitable, where everyone can prosper. Great transportation is fundamental to any great city because it provides its citizens access to opportunity. Ask yourself to listen tonight, what would this project mean for you and your loved ones? Envision what an improved regional transportation system could provide you and your community. Share your thoughts with us tonight, your ideas and your concerns. This is a conversation. Your voices, your opinions are essential to what we do. Thank you and I will now turn it back to our stellar project manager, Rachel Kennedy. Thank you, Colleen, and thank you, Council President Campbell. Um, really appreciate your introductions and uh, hearing how excited you are about this project. I know I am as well. Um, and our next slide, we have our agenda that kind of lays out the different items that we'll be discussing tonight. So we'll be providing you an overview of the objectives for this workshop, as well as another workshop that we have planned for later this spring, uh, providing some information about uh, Sandeg's regional plan that is currently being developed and how that fits together with the comprehensive multimodal corridor plans. Um, we'll be looking specifically into our Central Mobility Hub and Connections uh, corridor and the study area and some information on demographics um, and travel patterns in our area. And then sharing with you some initial draft Central Mobility Hub concepts for your input. 
Um, throughout the meeting, we'll be doing uh, some polling to get feedback from you. And towards the end, we'll have a general uh, public comments and questions section, and then be providing you with some next step information and how you can continue to connect with us on this project. Next slide, please. So tonight's workshop will introduce the Central Mobility Hub and Connections Multimodal, Multimodal Corridor Plan. It's a mouthful. We sometimes refer to these as our CMCPs, but you'll probably hear me refer to it more just as a corridor plan during the, this meeting. Uh, we'll also be sharing some initial concepts for the proposed Central Mobility Hub. And we'll be asking for your input on transportation challenges and opportunities um, within our study area in your community. And the feedback that you provide tonight will help to inform the development of this corridor plan and the Central Mobility Hub project. Next slide, please. So as I mentioned, we'll also be having another public workshop um, later this spring, and that one is going to be focused on the proposed transportation solutions uh, within our corridor area, including connections, multimodal connections to the Central Mobility Hub. Next slide. Um, and now we'll turn it over to Gia Balish from Sandegg's Communications Department, who will uh, share some information about some online engagement tools that we have. Thank you, Rachel. So as Rachel mentioned, this is the first workshop in a series of two that we will be hosting for the Central Mobility Hub and Connections Comprehensive Multimodal Corridor Plan. Now there will be ways for you to submit comments and interact with us throughout tonight's presentation. But even after and throughout this process, we encourage you to continue engaging with us via our interactive, um, excuse me, our social engagement site. Uh, so the link is here for you, sandag.mysocialpinpoint.com slash CMH and connections. There's also a QR code available if you'd simply like to use your phone to scan that. And it, here on the screen before you, you can see it, several screenshots from that interactive site. So you will have the option not only to learn more about the project, but to view an interactive map where you can leave comments about the project area. Uh, there's also a comment form where you can leave general comments, suggestions, or questions, uh, as well as ways for you to contact our team via email, uh, text or phone. So again, I encourage you to use this site in the weeks and months to come, but also during today's presentation, if you feel that there's anything you'd like to share, or if you're interested in learning more about the project. Next slide, please, Brie. Now to begin tonight's conversation, we want to begin learning a bit more about you and how this project will potentially impact your life. Uh, so here you can see a map showing our project study area. Our study is really focused on the area around San Diego International Airport, including the Midway District, um, as well as surrounding communities, including Point Loma, um, parts of Uptown and Mission Valley. Uh, we'll go more into we'll go into more detail about the project area momentarily. But now, what I'd like to ask is, looking at this project and knowing the study area now, what is your connection to the project area? So we're going to open a poll soon um, so that you can tell us. Um, again, what is your connection? And please check all that apply. And those options are: Do you live in the area? Work? own a business, visit for shopping or entertainment, attend school, visit recreation areas, or other. And I'll give you a few moments now to respond. Thank you. So momentarily, you should all see the results of that poll. We thank you for participating. Throughout today's presentation, we are going to have se several poll questions to learn more about you and get your input on this presentation and the project. So thank you. And I will actually turn it over now to our Director of Regional Planning, Colleen Clemenson.
Thank you, and great to see you all again. So um, really important in this process is to really um, understand the context under which we are planning. And that starts with the re-envisioning of our transportation future. And the slides aren't advancing on my screen. It just has the polling question. Do we have a slide? Okay. So we're in the process right now of re-envisioning the region's transportation future and providing compelling options to driving where transit is as convenient, less expensive, and gets us where we want to go. Still being able to drive if we need to, but having alternatives that are better for the environment, are more equitable and help us meet our state and federal mandates. And this iconic image is really our inspiration for that plan. And if you look at the star in the middle, that's where we're talking about the central mobility hub. Next slide. Preparing this plan has been done through a data driven planning process. And at the very basics, it's starting with where people live and where they work. And the figure on the left, shows the density of where people live in this region, which, are, which is largely the western third or quarter of the region. And the figure on the right, which shows the blue areas, are the employment centers, which are spread out through the region. As we start to bring this together, next slide, you can see how important it is that we really think about what is it that we are solving for. And so we're solving for three primary issues, congestion, social equity, and meeting our state and federal mandates. Next slide. We're doing this through five interrelated strategies. So using data, knowing what we're solving for, and then applying what we call the five big moves. And not one of these strategies can be done on their own. They're completely interrelated and rely upon one another for their individual success. So we have complete corridors, transit leap, mobility hubs, flexible fleets, and the operating system, which is the technology that makes it all work. And when we talk about complete corridors, we're talking about multimodal corridors, making sure that on our highways and local streets and roads, we're accommodating for all users of the transportation system. Transit leap is taking that big step when it comes to transit so that it's fast, it's going 80, 90, 100 miles an hour so that it's truly competitive with driving. Mobility hubs are the centers of activity throughout the region that then are linked through high-speed transit and then supported by flexible fleets, which are smaller neighborhood vehicles that help us get around within the mobility hub areas to and from high-speed transit closing that gap for that first and last mile and also helping us make trips where maybe transit doesn't go and then the operating system that optimizes everything in terms of the investments next slide here's how it all comes together this is a regional perspective so what we're talking about and if you do the first click you will see the complete corridors. And what we're talking about is a complete system of managed lanes like we see on Interstate 15 throughout the highway system. And it's completely connected. The next click you'll see improvements that are necessary on our rural highways for safe evacuation routes and safety improvements. Next click. This is the high speed commuter rail. This is the really fast commuter rail that will go from our densest parts of our region and connect in to our key employment centers. Next click, this is improvements on our trolley system and on the Sprinter up in North County, as well as the light blue, which shows a very robust, what we call rapid transit network. And then the next click, you'll see the mobility hubs, and it's a network of mobility hubs. The central mobility hub is the key, but we see 29 or so others throughout the region then that would be connected through high-speed transit and through our complete corridors. And the central mobility hub would have a direct connection to the San Diego airport, something I think all of us as residents of this region have longed for is a high-speed transit connection to our San Diego International Airport. The goal is a system that is addressing congestion, so it's fast, 
It's addressing social equity so it's fair, and it's meeting our state and federal requirements for clean air and, and meeting climate goals, making it clean. So thank you, that's the vision and I think really sets the stage for the work that we're doing at a more detailed level with the Central Mobility Hub and connections within the communities. And with that, I will turn it over to Nicola Bernard, who is the co-project manager with Rachel Kennedy on this great planning effort. Nicola. Thank you, Colleen, and good evening. Calvins and Sandag have a strong partnership lasting over three decades, which has led to many successful projects, including construction of trolley routes, the multiple projects on the I-5 North Coast Corridor, and the State Route 11 Corridor. Corridor plans are being developed across the state. Our two agencies will continue together to provide the best comprehensive multimodal corridor plans for the San Diego region. Next slide, please. As Colleen just mentioned, the regional plan is looking at transportation needs for the whole San Diego region at a higher regional scale. The comprehensive multimodal corridor plans take a more detailed look at transportation in selected areas of the region. In September 2019, the Sandag Board of Directors allocated $40 million to develop 12 corridor plans throughout the region. Five of these plans are currently being developed as a joint effort between Caltrans and Sandag, with input from local jurisdictions, partner agencies, and community stakeholders. The plans we are currently working on are the North Co County Corridor Study, shown in yellow, which includes the State Route 78 and Sprinter Corridor from the coast to Escondido. The San Vicente Study, shown in orange, includes the State Route 67 Corridor from El Cajon to Ramona. The Coast Canyons and Trails Study in green includes the State Route 52 corridor and the freeway portion of State Route 67 in Lakeside, as well as the Green Line trolley. The South Bay to Sorrento study in purple includes Interstate 5 from the Mexico border to downtown San Diego and Interstate 5 from the border to Sorrento Valley, as well as the Blue Line trolley. And the Central Mobility Hub study in blue and what we're here to present today includes Interstate 5 from downtown where the north end of the South Bay to Sorrento study ends, the Interstate 8, and includes the coaster, trolley, and other transit services. And you can see that some of these studies overlap, but be assured that we're working to closely to ensure all feasible projects are incorporated. The corridor plans use travel and demographic data, community plans, and public input to develop multimodal transportation solutions to provide better access to jobs, education, and services. The corridor studies will be looking at all transportation modes, transit services, highways, local roadways, bikes and walking paths, flexible fleets, goods movement, and the technologies needed to help them all work together efficiently. These corridor plans also help the San Diego region to compete for transportation project funding, including State Senate Bill 1 funds. And now I'll pass it back to you, Rachel. Thank you, Nicola. Um, and we can advance uh, one more slide as well. So now we'd like to focus on um, our corridor study. Uh, and you can see our map here in blue on the screen. Uh, with our dark blue areas, what we refer to as our, our study area and our lighter blue area as our areas of influence. Um, as has been noted before, our study area includes the Midway District, portions of Old Town, downtown San Diego, and parts of Point Loma. Um, and we have a number of major transportation facilities, including portions of I-5 and I-8, uh, Pacific Highway, um, and the Central Mobility Hub with a direct connection to the San Diego International Airport. Currently, we have a number of transit services that serve this area, including the coaster, trolley, Amtrak, and multiple rapid and local bus lines. Um, and we have some more limited active transportation facilities, including uh, Harbor Drive bike path, uh, portions of the San Diego River Trail, and a number of new uh, bike lanes that have been built by the city of San Diego in downtown San Diego. Next slide, please. So here taking a look at some of the demographic information for our corridor study. Uh, this includes information for both the light and dark blue areas that you saw on the previous map. And if, uh, looking at population, our study area makes up about 6% of the region's population with around 183,000 residents. 
the area is home to about 12% of the region's jobs, with the largest concentration of jobs being located in downtown San Diego. Um, and with jobs at military installations, the San Diego International Airport, and the hospitals in uh, Hillcrest also being concentrations of jobs. The corridor also contains about 84,000 housing units, which are made up of a combination of single family homes, multifamily homes, and military housing. Can you click through to the next slide, please? When developing the corridor plans, we'll be identifying transportation solutions to prioritize mobility for traditionally underserved populations, including seniors, low-income households, and people who identify as Black, Indigenous, and people of color. Through the transportation solutions, including the Central Mobility Hub, we are aiming to provide these communities with improved access to jobs, education, and services. Next slide, please. While this corridor does have a number of regional transportation services and connections, we know there are challenges too. We've been reviewing the existing transportation data and community and agency plans and have noted some key areas of challenge. Right now, there are limited opportunities to access the airport via easy and convenient transit. And we know that freeways and many local roadways experience congestion, especially during the main commute hours. Uh, a lack of sidewalks and bike facilities make it hard for people walking and biking uh, to move around portions of the study area easily and safely. And while this corridor does have a number of transit services, they may be far from people's homes or destinations, and there isn't an easy way to make that first or last mile connection. One of the key strategies to addressing these challenges is creation of a central mobility hub. As you heard earlier, the Central Mobility Hub is a fundamental component of the 2021 regional plan that's being developed. And we envision that this hub could help to improve transportation within the corridor and connectivity throughout the greater San Diego region. Um, additionally, by locating the Central Mobility Hub within this corridor, it could provide a much needed uh, direct transit connection to the airport. And to speak more about what's envisioned for the uh, Central Mobility Hub, I'd now like to introduce SANDAG Director of Special Projects, Ryan Cohen. Ryan? Thank you, Rachel. Uh, next slide, please. Um, the CMH brings together everything that we are trying to do with a regional plan. It will provide a nexus for all forms of transportation, cars, bus and rail transit, bike and pedestrian, to all come together from anywhere in the San Diego region to access the airport and beyond with a quick and comfortable ride directly into the airport terminals. Easy access to jump on or off Interstate 5 with a convenient pick up and drop off facilities. The CMH will pull traffic off of the airport's front door and improve the local, trans, uh, the local traffic conditions. Next slide, please. We're looking at two sites right now for the Central Mobility Hub. The first is the Intermodal Transit Center, uh, which is located uh, in blue um, with the black star on top. Um, the, IT, the Intermodal Transit Center is a 13-acre site located near the northeastern edge of the airport between Interstate 5 and Pacific Highway, just south of Washington Street. SANDAG initially studied th this site in 2010 as part of a follow-up to the airport authorities 2009 destination Lindbergh airport planning process. Um, this site is also in between I-5 and the existing low sand rail tracks. Um, the second site that we're looking at is the Navy's Old Town Campus. That's in the purple magenta uh, north of the Intermodal Transit Center. This site is just west of Interstate 5 as well and located right on top of the existing low sand rail corridor. Uh, this, the Navy's 70-acre Old Town campus is a half mile from the airport, and right now the Navy is looking to redevelop that site so that they can construct new military facilities as part of a greater redevelopment project. And so we're working with the Navy on options to explore putting the Central Mobility Hub on their property as part of their overall redevelopment project. This redevelopment of the OTC site would also, could also include land uses that are supportive to the transit center, such as housing, uh, office space, and recreational and shopping opportunities that would create a functional transit-oriented space in the center of, in the heart of San Diego that would be a positive experience for residents and uh, tourists alike. Next slide, please. 
The Navy is, is exploring or is looking at uh, modernizing their existing NAVWAR facilities. NAVWAR is the Navy's Artificial Intelligence and Cyber Warfare Command for the entire United States Navy. And it's operating out of facility, World War II era uh, uh, aircraft manufacturing facilities that have become outmoded and, and obsolete. And they really need a new facility to help them meet their, the, the challenges of their critical national security mission. What they're proposing to do is to redevelop the 70 acres as part of a mixed use development with all of, of what I said before, housing, recreational opportunities, additional office space, it, with the idea of then taking that development and using that to get and fund a new military NAVWAR facility. Over the last year, SANDAG has been working, engaged, and partnered with the Navy in looking to see how we might do, be able to do more together than, we, they, than the Navy or SANDAG could do on their own, and, and whether we could include the Central Mobility Hub as part of their overall redevelopment project. They would redevelop the site, they would get their new military facility, and they would reserve a space where we could put our important regional transportation hub on that site to connect to the airport and to connect with all the other uh, transportation modes to come into that mobility hub and access the airport. And this would also provide uh, uh, an opportunity for the Navy's redevelopment to be positioned around the, our new transportation hub allowing us all to get more out of the site than, than any of us could get on their own. And with that, I will turn it back to Rachel to tell us more about what the Central Mobility Hub might look like. Thank you, Ryan. Um, so today's workshop will present three initial concepts for the Central Mobility Hub. Uh, you'll notice we share the images of these draft, draft concepts, but they're sketches. These are not final concepts. Uh, we're looking for your input and your feedback tonight to help us with their refinement. And later this spring, we'll be holding a second workshop to consider the transportation connections within the corridor and the Central Mobility Hub. Next slide, please. So San Diego is one of the only major metropolitan areas with an international airport that does not provide convenient and direct transit access to and from the airport and to destinations throughout the region. Some of you may have traveled to other cities in the United States or internationally where you were able to easily connect from the airport on a train or a bus or other transportation that quickly and efficiently brought you to your hotel or other destination. Many mobility hubs also have various user amenities such as restaurants, shopping, passenger waiting areas, ticketing and baggaging services. And what we're looking to do here is to provide a comfortable, safe, and easy type of experience. And that's what we want to create here in San Diego. Um, not only providing easy access to and from the airport, but also bringing together various transportation services to provide this community with access to points uh, throughout our region and beyond. Uh, with the mobility hub that, that we're um, envisioning, it would include uh, transportation services uh, from Amtrak, the coaster, the trolley, rapid buses, local buses, uh, new flexible fleets uh, that Colleen talked to a bit about in her presentation on the regional plan. Um, it would offer opportunities for people to drop off or pick up passengers, um, have space for, for rideshare uh, users like Uber or Lyft, uh, connections for bicycles, pedestrian paths, and good sidewalks that connect it to the surrounding community, as well as an automated people mover that would take people directly to and from the airport. Next slide. So as we started our work uh, to develop the concepts for the Central Mobility Hub, we took a look at a number of other transit centers, um, particularly those that offered services connecting to airports um, or to other regional transit services, both in the US and internationally. And Denver Union, Union Station was an example of a transit center that had a number of features that could complement the San Diego region. Um, similar to San Diego, this station brings together a number of transportation services, including buses, Amtrak, and commuter rail, light rail, and pick up and drop offs for passengers. And it really integrates them seamlessly into the surrounding community. Um, it has uh, attractive outdoor plazas and gathering places, successful restaurants and retail establishments, and integrates natural light throughout the facility. 
So now we'd like to get some input from you on elements that you think are important to be included in San Diego's future central mobility hub. So I'm going to turn it over to Gia for the polls. Thank you, Rachel. Our first question, now that you know a bit more about mobility hubs and what the central mobility hub is intended to do, we'd like to ask, the central mobility hub is intended to be a welcoming place for the public to gather. What features would you like to see incorporated into the central mobility hub to make it an asset to the community? And we ask that you select up to three of the following options. Enhanced landscaping, public art, public plaza, seating, wayfinding signage, interpretive exhibits such as historical or educational exhibits, wide sidewalks, fountains or water features, bike paths or other. And we'll give you 30, 30 seconds now to answer. Wonderful. Well, it looks like the results have come in and it, we're seeing quite a bit of interest in a public plaza. It looks like there are also, um, there's strong interest in quite a few of the features that we listed. It's almost evenly divided actually, but I also see that bike paths are a strong um, point of interest for the community. So thank you for weighing in. I want to reiterate that all of our polls and all of the comments that we're receiving will be recorded so that we can consider these as we're developing our plan. So thank you all. Now we're going to move on to our next polling question. What services or amenities would you like to see incorporated into the Central Mobility Hub to improve the travel experience? And again, we ask that you select up to three of the following options. Retail, restaurants or food service, office space, childcare, entertainment, personal services such as hair salons, package lockers or shipping services, technology features such as Wi-Fi or USB charging ports, bicycle storage or services such as repair shops or other. And again, we'll give 30 seconds for you to answer. Right, well, I'm seeing, seeing overwhelming interest in restaurants or food service. Also, it looks like great interest in bicycle storage or services and technology features. So again, thank you all so much for weighing in. Um, again, we're going to record all of these results. And with that, I'm going to turn it back to, or I'm actually going to turn it over to Steve Skibola, who is going to be presenting the Central Mobility Hub Concepts. Thank you, Gia, and um, good evening, everybody. I see by my count here, we're at almost 200 uh, participants. So I want to extend uh, also my thanks to everyone for, for giving us their time tonight. Really appreciate it. So um, what I want to do is walk you through what uh, the concepts um, might look like and uh, as a traveler and as a resident, how you might uh, experience uh, these facilities uh, in the future. So I'll start with the uh, two concepts that we've developed uh, at the Navy's Old Town Campus, and then I'll uh, also um, discuss our third concept, which is at uh, 
the uh, intermodal transportation center site. Next slide, please. So just to, I think everyone is familiar with the site and we've, uh, uh, Ryan uh, covered it, uh, but just to orient you for the aerial view you're about to see in a moment, this is a view uh, basically hovering over, uh, uh, call it uh, Enterprise and Barnett, and we're looking uh, northeast towards uh, Old Town and you can see obviously the five freeway there in the background, Pacific Highway in the foreground and the existing uh, Old Town campus uh, NAVOR facility. Next slide. So here's a, a first concept, concept one, uh, oddly enough. And I uh, just want to point out a couple of features. I'll, I'll walk through the transportation elements in more detail in some upcoming graphics, but this kind of gives you a, a lay of the land. And uh, there's some similarities between concept one and concept two that you'll see in a minute. Uh, and uh, I was relieved to see in the survey that uh, people uh, are interested in a central plaza. We also feel that that's uh, an important part of what makes these uh, facilities not only successful, you know, transportation facilities, but actually uh, community centers and things that can really serve as a focus for, um, for the community. So you see uh, this version has a, a very large plaza right up front and it kind of lives um, and gets um, pedestrian and bicycle access uh, from uh, Pacific Highway at both Enterprise and Kurtz. So it kind of restitches the the, the street grid that exists or existed in the area and stitches it back together through uh, through the OTC site. And uh, some of the other things you can see from this uh, picture uh, is the uh, the central building there. That's the actual central mobility hub uh, building. And uh, you know the architecture for this, the, you know, isn't necessarily going to look like this. Uh, that'll be part of uh, probably some some form of competition. But uh, it's meant to be an iconic building that will also house uh, all of the services that uh, that make this, uh, you know, not only a great place for travelers, but also for the community. So shops, restaurants, uh, travel services. Uh, the other thing you see uh, kind of elevated there is the um, automated people mover. This is uh, what actually connects to the airport uh, initially along Pacific Highway and then on into the airport. And um, the idea is that it would be laid out so that it could be extended into the Midway community if there's um, if there's an interest in, uh, in that in the future. Um, the other things that uh, are, you, you don't see um, in this plan, but I do want to talk about is that uh, this would um, be uh, designed to be um, to basically fit very well with the emerging plan for Pacific Highway and for uh, for Enterprise and Kurtz and Sports Arena as they were articulated in the, the recent update of the Midway Community Plan. So basically uh, transforming these streets into much more you know, balanced streets that have wide sidewalks, uh, that have excellent um, uh, bike facilities so that it'll be very easy to access the site by biking and walking as well as you know, our traditional modes of, of driving around. The other thing that you don't see that's just off the map to the right is that uh, part of the plan includes a, a, um, a much reconfigured and expanded um, interchange with I-5 at uh, Old Town uh, that will provide a more direct connection uh, to Pacific Highway and to Barnett uh, so that that will make it much easier to get in and out uh, in, uh, in the community here. Uh, next slide. So this is concept two, and at first glance, they're, they're very similar, and they are. Uh, they share the same kind of entry and exit points uh, off of Enterprise and Kurtz. The, uh, the main differences here are basically um, that we've swapped the location of the actual central mobility hub building and the people mover. Uh, and a couple of reasons for this, uh, by bringing the building closer to Pacific Highway, it can act as uh, a further um, sort of extension to the uh, redevelopment that the Navy is going to do um, to the to either side of the central mobility hub. So it'll create, you know, a nice continuous um, um, street front um, along Pacific Highway that will enliven uh, that part of the street. Um, the other thing is it moving the airport people mover over the rail corridor basically allows for a shorter connection. So people that are coming by by trolley or coaster or Amtrak uh, we'll be able to just, you know, take a, an elevator or escalator up uh, and get on the airport people mover. Um, this version also brings our bus facility because essentially, uh, you know, this facility would replace the um, Old Town Transit Center. So, uh, you know, the trolley, the coaster, Amtrak, and the uh, the bus plaza um, that exists there today would all kind of migrate south 
to this location. So we would provide a bus plaza at grade here to uh, to uh, make that uh, make those easy connections to and from the trolley, the cable mover, and and other modes. Next slide. So um, what I'm going to walk you through now is a series of cross sections because this is probably the best way to understand as a traveler or you know, as a resident in the community how how you would actually use this facility to to get around. And um, this particular slide does um, again in, indicate the uh, the difference between concepts one and two, the major differences. So just to orient you again, um, this is uh, looking north uh, through the site. If you could like just cut uh, cut a section right through the the site and peek in on it uh, with x-ray vision. This is what you would see. So Pacific Highway is right at the, uh, the left end of the diagram, and then I-5 is to the right. And so what you can see there in concept one outlined in the green boxes is, is where the people mover sits there um, relative to the plaza, which is right next to it. Um, one major difference that um, I'll highlight uh, a little later, but uh, is that concept one has the buses coming in below grade. So uh, they, would, they would basically uh, use uh, ramps uh, along the um, Pacific Highway to go down a level. And we would have a below grade bus facility right under the plaza. And this is taking you know, uh, a good idea that we saw at, uh, at Denver Union Station. And then continuing moving to the right uh, through the plaza, we then enter the, the actual central mobility hub building itself. And again, uh, there, there's an underground concourse that would continue uh, so that you could safely get under the, the rail uh, tracks and then pop up to the rail corridor um, where, uh, you know, depending on which trade you're, ca you're catching. And then one level up from that, from the rail corridor, is a new direct pickup and drop off facility right off the five freeway. So Whereas people who live in, in the neighborhood, they can access, you know, they can pick up and, and drop off people right off of Pacific Highway. They can come into the plaza and, and drop people off at sort of the front door or right at the people mover um, in order to keep regional traffic from, from having to, to get on local streets to do that same pick up and drop off. If you're coming from North County or wherever, you would have a direct uh, facility uh, with its own off ramp off the five freeway that would then drop people off right above the rail corridor and then the folks can make their way down. Um, concept two is similar, but you can see by the red and or the green and blue boxes having switched that now the, the central mobility hub building moves to the left, closer to Pacific Highway. The bus plaza moves at grade. And then what we've done is then stacked the people mover. So now it's at a third level uh, over the rail corridor. So you have rail corridor, next level up, you have the, um, the pick up and drop off driving facility from the five and then one level up from that is the people mover. So if you're making one of those connections, it's just a, a straight shot. Next slide, please. So this slide uh, just shows you or highlights uh, what I just mentioned about the bus facility. So in alternative one, it's an underground bus facility, one level down right under the, uh, the main plaza. In, uh, in concept two, the, the bus plaza is integrated into the, into the uh, the main plaza right at grade. So it's a, it's a little bigger uh, and the buses are all uh, at, that, uh, at that level. Next slide. So again, uh, I'm gonna walk you through a, a couple of scenarios of uh, how you would get around. And um, just to give you a sense of scale, because it is a large site, um, those light blue lines, that's, that's about a five minute walk. Uh, so that just kind of gives you a sense of, uh, you know, to walk from one end of the facility to, to the other is about five minutes. Uh, next slide. So the first movement is if somebody is um, um, being uh, picked up or dropped off, uh, let's say dropped off uh, for this direction. Uh, so they're coming from, again, East County, North County, wherever they're coming from, they're being driven to this facility and they want to make their way over to the people mover so that they can um, uh, catch a ride to the airport. So uh, in, in both cases, they would land on that uh, uh, raised um, facility that's right over the rail corridor uh, using a direct uh, ramp. And that could be by, you know, private car, it could be by Uber, Lyft, um, shuttles, you know, uh, all, all modes would be able to access that uh, drop-off facility. Next slide. Then following that green line, uh, I'll just follow it from right to left, uh, you would uh, then uh, walk over to the nearest um, either stairs or probably escalators because if you're 
going to fly, you'll probably have a roller bag with you at least. So probably use the elevator to go down uh, one level to the, the ground level. Then you'd make your way through the, the central mobility hub uh, building itself. And if you have time, there'd be, you know, you'd grab a coffee or anything else uh, that you might need. Um, you then continuing moving to the left, you'd make your way out onto the plaza, cross over the plaza, and then uh, use the, um, again, another set of uh, elevators or stairs to go up to the people mover. Uh, in concept two, uh, it's, it's a little more straightforward. Um, we go on to the next slide. Very short, <laughs> very short uh, path. You just basically find uh, the nearest uh, elevator or set of stairs, go up one level, and the people mover is, uh, is there for you. Next slide, please. This next trip is uh, basically if you're a resident uh, in, in, uh, in um, the Midway community or Old Town or uh, anywhere, and um, you've now taken a bus to uh, the Central Mobility Hub, and you want to make your way over to the trolley to get you know, elsewhere in, in the region. Uh, you would um, again start off there in the in the star and in concept one you'd be coming in underground in the uh, in the bus facility next slide oh, I think we we lost the line on the next slide but um, I can just walk you through it from that uh, star on the left which is the underground bus facility you would make your way to the right, uh, again, using that uh, underground concourse, which uh, also would be, would have shops and things down there. So don't, you know, it wouldn't be just a, a tunnel. It would be uh, livened up with, with other uses as well. Uh, so you'd make your way across the underground concourse uh, and then use uh, whichever uh, stairs or, or elevators takes you up to the train that you're interested in. In this case, the trolley is the furthest one to the right, uh, indicated by that star. So you would go up one level and catch your trolley there. Next slide. Ah, there, okay, that one popped in. <laughs> um, and now on the bottom slide in concept two, uh, similar pattern, but uh, it's, it's a little shorter. Uh, the buses come in at the ground level uh, into the bus plaza, which is, you know, because we flipped the building to the other side, the bus plaza is a little closer to the rail corridor. So you, you land at that left star on, on the bottom concept and then make your way again down uh, stairs or, or elevator to the to the lower concourse and then make your way across and up to the trolley uh, and that would be um, another pattern so um, now that you've had a chance to sort of virtually experience these two alternatives and, um, or concepts i'm going to turn it back to gia who will um, have some questions about the two concepts for you Thank you, Steve. So as Steve said, now that we've provided you uh, with an overview of the first two concepts, which would potentially be located at the Navy Old Town campus, we'd like to know, do you think it would be more convenient to access the transportation services you would use in concept one or concept two? And here we ask that you would select either of the concepts, or if you don't see a difference in the services that you would use most frequently, you can select no difference. So I'll give everyone 15 seconds to answer this. And it looks like the answers are almost evenly divided uh, with a slight preference toward concept two, um, but also almost a, a little over a third of everyone also saying that it would not make a difference. So thank you. We'll move on to the next question now. When transferring between different modes of transportation or traveling through the central mobility hub, do you prefer one, shorter walking distance with elevators or stairs or two, a slightly longer walk without elevators or stairs? Or do you have no preference? And again, we'll give everyone 15 seconds to answer.
Thank you. And it looks like just over half of our attendees would prefer a shorter walking distance with elevators or stairs. Thank you all again for your input and I'm going to pass it back to Steve to review concept three. Thanks, Gia. So now we'll be moving uh, south to uh, Pacific Highway in Washington. And uh, yeah, we can go on to the next slide. Uh, to talk about the third concept, which is at the uh, airport intermodal center. So uh, again, to orient you, we're now um, hovering just uh, just above uh, Washington and uh, looking sort of south uh, east towards the airport. You can see there in the, in the far distance right in the center is the uh, the new rental car facility. And then uh, we have Pacific Highway. And then, of course, in the foreground, we have I-5 and, and Washington running across uh, across the bottom. Now, um, this site, as, as you can see, it's, um, you know, it's a smaller site than, uh, than the whole uh, Navy's Old Town campus. So uh, this, this, what I'm about to show you would be more of a standalone facility. Uh, it doesn't really lend itself to having, you know, um, mixed uses on site. There, there would be some, um, certainly, you know, again, some shops, restaurants, things uh, serving travelers, but it really doesn't, you know, there, there wouldn't be like, new housing at the site, for example, it, it'd be more of a, you know, pure transportation facility. But having said that, we would uh, look at making some uh, street improvements, particularly to Washington, which is slated to get um, upgraded uh, or new bike facilities anyway. We would look to make that connection along Washington to the uptown neighborhood as, as uh, smooth as possible. And of course, we have the, the Kettner, um, um, uh, the Hancock Kettner uh, corridor right on the other side of Washington, and we'd want to make sure we have good pedestrian connections uh, that way. Um, we can go on to the, the next slide. So, uh, so here's a general concept for what the uh, uh, central mobility hub would look like at this facility. And again, I'll walk through the, the transportation um, items in a, in a more of a sectional view, because that's easier, but um, uh, it would have a, a bus facility, um, uh, on site, it wouldn't need to be as big as the one at uh, at the uh, uh, OTC site, because uh, unlike the, you know this one would not replace the existing Old Town Transit Center. It would be a new hub, uh, but it's uh, far enough away that it you know it, it, both uh, facilities would continue to to exist. So this bus facility doesn't need to be uh, quite as large, um, and then. Uh, right there at the corner of, uh, of Hancock and, and Washington would be where the, um, the actual uh, central mobility hub building would be as well as the plaza. Uh, and the plaza, which I forgot to mention in the previous one, uh, the plaza is also where you would catch all of your sort of personal mobility, you know, if you want to rent a bike or a scooter or you know, in the future hoverboards or whatever we'll have, that'll be the place uh, to do that. A couple of other things we're thinking about in the area to improve the circulation. Um, you know, one of the issues with this site is um, the rail corridor is right in the middle of it. And of course we have an at grade crossing of the rail corridor with Washington. And so that presents some challenges in terms of getting uh, buses and, and other, you know, uh, feeder services into and out of the facility. So as part of this, we are looking at two grade separation concepts. One would be, um, taking the rail corridor down into a short trench below Washington so that uh, Washington could be restored just as a, uh, you know, an at-grade street. Um, it, and then an alternative to that is uh, doing a grade separation. It, it unfortunately doesn't work at, at uh, Washington because of the grades and we just don't have enough room, but uh, um, just one street up at uh, uh, Knoll, uh, we can uh, make a grade separation there uh, work. So that's a, that's a concept we're looking at. We're also uh, looking at the idea of potentially changing uh, Hancock and, and Kettner uh, to a two-way street, at least uh, in front of the of the facility. Um, so between, you know, say Washington and, and, and Vine, uh, so that um, buses and other vehicles could get in and out a, a little more easily and, and go in all directions. So just uh, some some ideas to think about there. Uh, in the next slide, I can kind of walk you through again. Um, Oh, I'm sorry, I mentioned one other thing. Another uh, idea here is that, uh, well, again, we can't have a lot of mixed use development uh, right on the site. It is possible that we could put a cap over the bus facility and, do, and create a second level that would have, you know, potential for some additional um, uh, shops, restaurants, and, and traveler services. Next slide, please. 
so here we have another section. Uh, this one's kind of reversed from the other ones, and now I-5 is on the left, uh, and the airport and Pacific Highway are on the right. And um, this one is fairly easy to, to navigate because everything is sort of in, in a straight line. Uh, so um, starting from, uh, from I-5, if we go down the hill a little bit, we, we have Hancock and Kettner, and the, uh, that would serve as basically the main uh, pickup and drop off for private cars and, and taxis and, and Ubers. And that would be for both the community and for the I-5, since the, the ranch from I-5 are, are very con conveniently located to make that drop off work. Then moving to the right, we have our transit plaza and behind the transit plaza in this view would be the, uh, the bus bay. So they do, you can't see them here because they're behind the building, but everything sort of lines up there. From that plaza, you would then um, go up uh, a bridge, uh, the sky bridge as we're calling it here, and that would take you right across and let you access all of the other modes. So um, halfway along, you've got uh, Amtrak coaster or trolley. And then if you keep going, you have the connection to the airport people mover. There's also another connection to um, uh, uh, another uh, additional place uh, on the uh, service road uh, of Pacific Highway that would allow other shuttles and, and another area for pickups and drop-offs right next to the next to the people mover. Uh, next slide. And finally, uh, with this one again, giving you that sense of scale. So again, that light blue line is uh, about a five-minute walk, and uh, you can see there that you know that is the biggest walk that we would have, and that would be from the uh, pickup and drop-off right off of Hancock, right over the bridge to the people mover at the airport. And that is um, the concepts that uh, we would like your feedback on, uh, certainly today, but uh, as you'll see, there, there's opportunities to continue to comment beyond tonight's meeting. So turn it back to, uh, to you, Gia. Thank you, Steve. We have a few more polling questions that we'd like to go through, and then we're going to open up the conversation to address some of the questions that we've been receiving throughout the presentation. So I do want to thank all of you who have been submitting your questions. And if you haven't already, please feel free to do so. Now is the time so that we can ensure you have that chance to connect with our project team. But before doing so, we'll go into our next polling question. After seeing the central mobility hub concepts, what do you think are the most important elements for creating a user-friendly hub? And please select up to three of the following. Easy transfers between transportation modes, convenient pickup drop-off facilities, short walking distances, bicycle and or pedestrian connections to adjacent communities, dining and or retail, public plaza and or gathering space, or other. And we'll give it 30 seconds for everyone to read through and answer this question. Okay, and looking over the results, it looks as though easy transfers between transportation modes is a great priority of our attendees. So thank you all for weighing in. And then I also see interest in a public plaza or gathering space, bicycle or pedestrian connections, and convenient pickup drop off facilities. It's worth noting there were interest in all of these features, uh, but it looks like the most interest would go towards those that I just mentioned. So again, thank you. This is very helpful as we work on developing our plan. We'll move on now to our next question. How would you likely travel to and from the Central Mobility Hub? And again, please select up to three of the following. By trolley, rapid or local bus network, coaster or Amtrak, by car via pickup or drop off, by car utilizing paid parking nearby, carpool or van pool, on demand ride share service such as Uber or Lyft, biking or other micro mobility options, 
walking, or other. And we'll give you 30 seconds to respond. Okay, looking at the results, it looks as though the top answer by a small margin is by trolley. We certainly love seeing that. And then also interest in utilizing a car via pickup or drop off or on demand ride share services. Um, but also a, a fair amount of you interested in again biking to and from the facility, which I think is a, a theme of today's conversation. Uh, so again, thank you all for your input. And we will move on to our next polling question. How important is it for the Central Mobility Hub to be located adjacent to transit oriented development, such as housing, employment centers, office space, retail space, and similar? And here we ask that you please rank the importance on a scale of one to 10, with not important being one and very important being a 10. We'll give everyone just 15 seconds to think about this and respond. And it looks here as though everyone is leaning toward this being important, whether very important, a 10 or, or near there. So thank you all for weighing in. And our last polling question of the presentation, if we could progress. What are your top three transportation concerns for this corridor? So it's worth noting, as Rachel mentioned earlier, we're going to have a second workshop later this spring where we'll speak to a transportation solutions for the project study area. So not just focused on the central mobility hub. So here we'd like to know what, what your top three transportation concerns are for the corridor in question. And the options are travel safety, traffic congestion and travel reliability, transit availability and other transportation choices, access to economic opportunity, such as jobs and education, efficient goods movement, connecting affordable housing and jobs, cleaner transportation, so reducing climate change impacts and air pollution, or other. And we'll give you 30 seconds to review and respond. Again, we're asking that you select your top three concerns. Great, thank you for your feedback. It does look like traffic congestion and transit availability are two key concerns for those in attendance tonight. Uh, but I do also see cleaner transportation as being a top priority and travel safety. So again, uh, with all our questions, I thank you for, for providing your input. If you feel that these questions have not addressed your top concerns or suggestions, I do encourage you to, again, leave a comment in our Q&A function or to go to our social interaction site um, and I'll provide the link to that shortly again. 
But first, I want to go ahead and transition into the Q&A section of our presentation so that we can begin to address some of the questions we've been receiving throughout our presentation. Uh, so a project team, I'm going to ask that some of you assist with these questions. Um, one that I've seen a few times now is actually, um, you know, the reasoning behind creating a brand new central, central mobility hub as opposed to modifying the existing Old Town Transit Center. So uh, Rachel, I'm not sure if that's something you would like to address perhaps. Sure, so with our um, concepts that we've developed at the Navy Old Town Campus, um, we have the potential for a unique opportunity to work with the Navy uh, in the, the redevelopment of their site. As Ryan Kohat mentioned, that is something that they're currently uh, considering and um, we have an opportunity potentially there to bring together a number of different transportation uses um, uh, with some space that would allow us to combine them in a way that makes it easy for people to um, be picked up, dropped off, uh, transfer between various services. So it's, it's one opportunity that, can, that Sandag is currently exploring. Great, thank you, Rachel. And similarly, why, why not simply modify the existing Santa Fe Depot? Yeah, and with the Santa Fe Depot, um, you know, our space at that facility is, is limited as far as uh, being able to bring in some of the new uh, transportation um, routes and services that are being examined as part of the 2021 regional plan. Um, additionally, it's a historic structure that has some limitations as far as um, how it can be adapted. Uh, but generally, the site there is, is smaller and um, doesn't have quite as many opportunities or options to bring together as many transportation elements in, in one location. Thank you, Rachel. And Steve, if I could simply ask you to verify whether all concepts would include a stop for Amtrak or Coaster. Yes, that's correct. They would, uh, they would all include those services. Thank you. And we've also received a question about whether phase two of California high speed rail has been considered as part of our concepts. Uh, Steve or Rachel, is that something that I could have you address? Sure, yes, we have um, considered high speed rail in, in both of the concepts and that could be accommodated um, and incorporated into either location. Yeah, and um, actually something I should have picked up uh, in addition to high-speed rail, uh, Colleen mentioned um, the transit leap in the future, which will be, uh, you know, basically high-speed rail, but kind of local uh, high-speed commuter rail. And we've made provisions for both, uh, both of those services. Uh, more than likely, they would be uh, underground. More than likely, um, under the Pacific Highway right-of-way and or the rail corridor. But uh, the, they, they both can sort of... Uh, uh, dovetail into the facility and that would create, you know, you might consider like a fourth level in the future below what we, we've seen here. And that's similar to what uh, uh, the expansions that we've seen at uh, other facilities like this when that initially were using, you know, conventional rail and then when high speed rail came along, they created, you know, almost a, a new terminal within the terminal, if you will. Thank you, Rachel and Steve. Uh, Ryan, we've received a question about where exactly the Central Mobility Hub would be located if at the Navy Old Town Campus. Can I have you address that? Sure, I'd be happy to. Um, right now we're looking at um, locating the Central Mobility Hub roughly in the, in the center building of the existing Navor Campus. The reason we would place it there is that is a point where the low sand heavy rail is straight and um, kind of the appropriate place to build a, a straight parallel track platform where people could easily um, access, you know, uh, heavy rail and transit rail trains at that location. So that, that's where we would locate it. Thank you, Ryan. And Nicola, uh, we have a, a question that I, I would like to pass to you. Will northbound traffic on Interstate 5 be able to exit directly to the drop-off and pickup area for the Central Mobility Hub? 
And I believe that that is our goal at the moment. We are we need to evaluate the engineering and make sure that is actually possible. But that that is the goal. Thank you. And Rachel, if I could have you address this, we've received actually a, a few different questions about how the central mobility hub could connect to the nearby Midway district. If you wouldn't mind speaking to that, and Colleen, you may even want to weigh in here as well. Sure, so, um, you know, I think there's a lot of opportunities uh, to connect the central mobility hub to the surrounding community. Uh, in the next workshop, we're gonna be exploring those in more detail. Um, from a pedestrian standpoint, a bicyclist standpoint, a roadway, um, cars, uh, also how the buses will be accessing the site. So we are planning to get into that in more detail in the next workshop. Um, but I think we have some really exciting opportunities with this project and connecting to the surrounding community and making it a, a seamless connection where people can easily walk and bike and, and travel from the surrounding community into the um, central mobility hub and its adjacent uh, potential development. Um, so we are looking, you know, the community plan has, um, has plans for uh, bike paths and multi-use paths on Pacific Highway and is looking to, you know, re-envision the community and, and many of you were, were part of that uh, effort with the city. So we're taking a look at those documents and, and trying to look at as many opportunities as we have to connect the Central Mobility Hub uh, to the surrounding community um, at either location. Thank you, Rachel. And Ryan, if I could ask you to assist, um, we've received a question about cultural monitoring and impact during the development process to protect any ancient cultural artifacts. Can you speak about how we would ensure that? Absolutely. Um, as part of any project environmental analysis and an environmental document, both California and federal, you would study and develop a cultural resources plan um, that plan would be developed in a, uh, coordination cooperation with uh, tribal authorities and the State Historic Preservation Office. And that plan would um, provide exactly what we would do to monitor and, and um, handle any uh, cult cultural artifacts or Native American artifacts that would be discovered during construction or excavation. And, you know, how we would treat those artifacts and um, you know, how, who they would uh, pass to. So all of that would be described in the environmental document process, which would be available for public comment and um, consideration. Thank you, Ryan. Uh, Rachel or Steve, what about access to the ferry and cruise ship terminals? Don't fight to answer this one. <laughs> um, so that's not something that we have specifically uh, started looking into yet, but I think it's a, it's a good point to be bringing up and something that we should be examining in our kind of larger uh, transportation solution strategies. We know that those are, you know, important destinations for folks and, and ones that people might like to be able to utilize transit to access as well. So thanks for bringing that up. Yeah, it's a good point. Thank you both. Um, and it, we've received a question here about urban air mobility, on-demand flying taxis. Um, how are future mobility types and future facilities being taken into account um, in our plans? Uh, so specifically, I don't believe we have looked at uh, flying taxis at, at this point yet, but thank you for bringing that point up. Um, we have been looking at our five big moves and some of the, uh, you know, possibilities of perhaps um, self-driving uh, mobility services in the future, uh, taking into account that, you know, our facility will need to be somewhat flexible as uh, different transportation technologies evolve. So um, we are looking at this. This is a major uh, mobility hub whether it occurs at either location and, and looking to be able to, you know, include uh, certain transit services that are in existence now, um, but others that might be in existence in the future. Uh, some of the elements that we're considering um, relate to vehicle charging, 
uh, whether it's for some of our flexible fleet services, uh, electric buses, um, you know, within the larger transportation system, perhaps opportunities for um, conductive uh, charging on certain key roadways. So there's different elements that we're trying to uh, keep an eye forward on. Um, the flying taxis uh, has not been one that we've considered so far. So, well, uh, oh, well right. sorry, maybe Steve has. <laughs> um, well, uh, yeah, actually, we, we did consider, um, you know, reserving space. I don't know if it's flying taxis, but it might be more, you know, drone-based delivery services in the future. So um, the, the concept of reserving some roof space uh, on the central mobility hub building itself or the, or the adjacent, you know, mixed-use building that would be there that could be, um, you know, uh, purposed to support urban air mobility in, in the future. I think the key with a facility like this is, you know, we, none of us are going to be perfect at predicting the future, but we want to design the buildings and the plaza to be flexible so that, you know, when, when something new comes along, you know, we, we have some intelligently designed and laid out space that can then accommodate uh, new mobility services, because that's, that's the only thing we know. There will be new ones. We may not know what they look like, but uh, if we can at least create space that's flexible, uh, we should be able to accommodate them. Great. Thank you both. Um, Here's a, a question for you, Rachel, or Steve. Will there be any on-site parking? Rachel, perhaps you can take this. Sure, so with the um, work that we've done to date for the Central Mobility Hub, we're not currently um, envisioning that there would be on-site parking specifically for the transportation facility. Um, but there's also, you know, adjacent redevelopment, mixed-use development that's being considered by the Navy. Um, and that could potentially have uh, parking for, you know, the residents or users of those businesses. Thank you, Rachel. And we've received a, a couple questions about environmental concerns. Uh, so uh, uh, Rachel, I think perhaps I should give this to you. Um, this is a twofold question. How does this plan fit into the state's plan to reduce carbon emissions by 80% by 2050? And also, have we taken into account potential sea level rise when developing the concepts? So, with the Central Mobility Hub, you know, one of the, the things that we're trying to do here is to provide a lot of different transit uh, connections for folks. And, you know, that's generally a, a cleaner technology than having people drive by themselves and providing connections to um, not only the airport, but to destinations throughout the region for a variety of users. So we do see this facility is helping to um, you know, reduce greenhouse gases and, and promote use of uh, other transportation choices and also offering connections to the surrounding communities uh, via active transportation um, connections as well. And then I'm sorry, Gia, can you remind me of what the second, oh, the sea level rise. Mm -hmm. Yes, so we are, um, we are aware of, uh, you know, sea level rise challenges uh, by uh, climate change that is that is occurring and we are um, taking a look at this. We know that this is an area that in the future uh, likely will be impacted by sea level rise um, and we are considering that as we are developing the um, concepts. Thank you, Rachel. Uh, now, I do want to say to our attendees, I know we have some individuals who are listening via phone. And if you would like to comment, there are ways for you to uh, do so. So uh, simply raise your hand so that we know to call on you and then we will give you the opportunity to ask your question live. Uh, so uh, we're coming to the end of our presentation. So I think what I'll try to do now is answer just a couple more questions. And then if we receive any questions from our callers, we'll turn to those. Um, and if we do not answer your questions today, please note that we are recording all of them. So we can contact you after if you provide us with your email address, or uh, we will develop a frequently asked questions uh, document for our um, engagement site, as I mentioned earlier. So I, I just want you to know that we are tracking everything that you're leaving today, even if we aren't able to address it right now. Um, so it, just a, a couple more questions really quickly. Um, Rachel or Steve, will the existing Taylor Street grade crossing be grade separated to improve safety? Uh, 
Rachel, do you, I can. Um, if, if you want to go ahead, Steve, you can take that one. Okay. It is definitely something we are looking at. I will tell you it's a, a difficult um, place to do a great separation. Uh, the, just the, the, the road geometry is the fact that, you know, the freeway, the river, everything's really close. And uh, we also have some underground utilities to look at, but we, having said all that, we know, um, it, you know, it, it, it would be a benefit to grade separate it for, for the safety reasons mentioned also just for, um, there, there are going to, there are already a lot of uh, buses that, that cross the tracks there. There will be more in the future. Uh, there'll be a new uh, rapid bus that will come from the, from the northeast that will want to come down Taylor. Uh, and so that if we could make it work, it would, it would definitely create a, a benefit for everyone in the, in the area. Thank you, Steve. And this will be our last question for the evening. Um, what bicycle facilities exactly are being considered? Bike parking, bike ways, if you could elaborate on that. Um, and Rachel, I will pass that to you. Sure. So we are looking at um, having bicycle lanes or potentially uh, separated bicycle boulevards uh, within our project area. Um, we are looking at including uh, bicycle parking, uh, secured bicycle parking at the central mobility hub. Uh, we are taking a look not only just at the area immediately at the central mobility hub, but the larger study area that we showed on the maps earlier. Um, and we're doing an evaluation for the larger area of different types of uh, bicycle facilities that would be needed or appropriate depending on the uh, type of roadway that they'd be located either on or adjacent to. So um, that's part of the presentation that we'll be bringing back uh, later this spring, um, exploring some of the specific recommendations uh, for all of the different uh, modes that we have, including bicycle facilities. Thank you, Rachel. And that is a perfect transition to our next topic, which is next steps. Uh, so if we could progress the slide, please. And one more time, please. So here is a timeline of what to expect for this project as we work on developing the Central Mobility Hub and Connections Comprehensive Multimodal Corridor Plan. So you can see to date, what we've done is begun developing the Central Mobility Hub concepts that you saw today. We also held a community roundtable in December of last year to speak with some community leaders to get feedback about their top priorities, suggestions they might have for this project, and also concerns. Um, and then today, of course, we held our first public workshop to re review the concepts for the Central Mobility Hub. Next, we're going to begin evaluating multimodal connections to those proposed concepts. And it, later this spring, we're planning on having a second roundtable with community leaders to continue the conversation that we had today. And that will lead into our next workshop, which as we've mentioned, is going to focus more on transportation solutions and connections to and from the Central Mobility Hub. And then this is all culminating with our preparing and finalizing our comprehensive multimodal corridor report. Uh, so again, we, we thank you all for being here because this is all going to factor into that process. Um, if we could progress to the next slide, I do want to, like I said, encourage everyone to continue to stay informed and engage with us throughout this project. Um, so at the, the first and, you know, first and foremost, I want everyone to please visit our virtual engagement site. The website is listed for you again here. And again, we have the QR code available so that you can easily scan that using your phone or tablet. Um, note that we are going to be accepting comments on the Central Mobility Hub concepts through March 26th. But even after that date, we are going to accept general comments, suggestions uh, on the project as a whole. So it, when it comes to transportation solutions, different types of services you'd like to see included, um, we will continue to look at those. So please you know, feel free to comment throughout the months ahead. 
Um, we also have an interactive map, as I mentioned earlier on in the presentation, that is on this site. So you can really look at the project area in detail and leave very specific comments um, about any suggestions you might have, perhaps areas of concern, particular intersections that might need to be considered in this study. So we ask you to really spend some time looking at that map and, and please provide us with any feedback you might have. And then lastly, because we've been speaking quite a bit about the Central Mobility Hub, I do want to let everyone know that this spring we, be, we expect to begin the environmental review process for the Central Mobility Hub project. Um, and we will release a notice of preparation before we do that. Uh, so that will provide even more opportunities for your input um, and for us to, to work with you throughout this process. So again, we encourage all of you to, to stay in touch. And with that, I'm going to turn it back to our project manager, Rachel Kennedy. Thank you, Gia. Um, and if we could have the, the last slide, please. Um, as Gia mentioned, we have a number of different ways that you can connect with us for this effort, and we hope that you will. Uh, Gia mentioned our virtual engagement hub um, and the different tools that are there that you can use to provide comments and input. Um, we also have a phone number where you can call and leave comments or also text ideas that you have to us. Um, and we also have information here about our Sandeg and Caltrans uh, websites and social media. Uh, my contact information as well as that of my co-project manager Nicola Bernard is listed here on the slide as well. And I just wanted to thank everybody for you know taking some time out of your your busy lives and your evenings to um, to view the presentation and to provide us some feedback and uh, we'll be using this information uh, provided tonight and uh, in the coming weeks to help us refine these concepts um, and also as we start our work on the transportation solution strategies and we're looking forward to sharing that information with you uh, later this spring so thank you very much for your participation tonight and have a good evening